Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, I will show you how to leverage the Power BI tile control inside Power Apps. We will bring in specific visuals and the entire Power BI report inside of Power Apps. The use case here is an inventory management solution. I'm leveraging the Microsoft Visio visual inside of Power BI and bringing that into Power Apps. The shapes of the visuals will change the colors depending upon the data. So let's check it out in action. We will first build our Power BI report and dashboard. Since I want you to try this out along with me, in Power BI, on the left-hand navigation pane, if you head over to Get Data, we have an option here to get some sample content. So click on Samples. And here, let's pick the Opportunity Analysis Sample. Click Connect. Once it's successful, you can click on Go to Dashboard. And here, we will get a sample Power BI dashboard. This dashboard has tiles that are pinned. We have information like the opportunity size, the region, whether the opportunity was partner driven or not, and other pieces of metadata. Now, if I head over to my workspace, I have the dashboard right here. I have a report as well, and I have my data set. If I head over to the report, if I was to edit this, on the right hand side, we can see all our tables as well as all the fields within those tables. Now, let's see how we can leverage these Power BI dashboards, tiles, and reports inside Power Apps. We will create a blank Canvas app. Pick the tablet form factor and give this app a name. We'll click Create. Now, to add Power BI tiles inside Power Apps, we go to Insert, go to Charts, and pick the Power BI tile control. And to connect to our data, we need to select a workspace. This will list out all workspaces that I have access to. In my case, the opportunity analysis sample that we installed is in my workspace, so I'll pick that. Then I will pick the dashboard. And from my dashboard, I can pick a tile. These are the tiles that were pinned on the dashboard. And they are all being listed right here. Pick the first option here, which is average revenue. And I can select the tile drop down here and pick any other tile. Now, for this Power BI tile, if we look at the properties, we have a property called tile URL. And this is the URL directly to that specific tile inside that dashboard. It has the dashboard ID, it has the tile ID, and some configuration information. And this tile URL got plugged in when we selected workspace, dashboard, and the tile. Now with one control, you can associate one tile. So if I need another tile from that dashboard to be shown in my Power App, I can simply go and insert another Power BI tile. Once again, I will connect it to my workspace, my dashboard, and pick my tile. Now if you want to filter the data in this Power BI tile within Power Apps, for the Power BI control, we have a property called Allow New API. And I will turn this property to true. Now, if we look at the documentation for the Power BI tile, if the allow new API property is turned on, we get a lot of additional capabilities, like applying filters based on multiple fields. Plus, we can also bring in an entire Power BI report or a dashboard as well into that Power BI tile control. Now, if we head over to the tile URL property, where the tile URL property ends, I will apply the following filter. Ampersand dollar filter is equal to. So let's say we want to filter the data in this tile where the opportunity size is small. If you look at the Power BI report, and if I search for opportunity size in the fields, the opportunity table has this specific field. So the way we can apply the filter is we will plug in the table name slash the field name. In this case, the field name has a space. Space has to be replaced with underscore x0020 underscore. So opportunity size equal to, in single quotes, I'll plug in the value, which in my case here is small. 
The first tile here is filtering the data based upon the opportunity size, which is small. Now we can apply the same logic to the second tile as well. Now in order for us to filter the data based on values coming in directly from Power Apps, so I've added a label, put the text opportunity size, and now I'll add a drop down, and here I will provide the following values. Small, medium, and large. I have renamed this drop down. I'll copy the name of the drop down. And now for my Power BI tile, all I have to do is instead of hard coding the value for the opportunity size, under double quotes, between two ampersands, I will use my drop down control dot selected dot value. And the same will apply to my second tile as well. Now, if I change this to medium, you will observe how the data in both the tiles gets filtered based on the opportunity size that I have selected. Next, let's try and bring the entire report. Once again, we will add the Power BI tile. And here we will head over to advanced and go to the tile URL property and plug the URL directly. And to get this URL for the report, if we head over to file, and go to embed report. We have an option here called website or portal. From here, all we need to do is copy the link and plug that link right here. Now this will bring in the entire Power BI report directly inside Power Apps. Now we're gonna apply multiple filters to this. So I will recommend you go and turn on the allow new API property to true. And since I have a lot of real estate to play with, I'm just going to drag this across the entire space that's available. Let's go ahead and preview the app. Here we get the entire report experience, including the pages in the report and the page level filters. And this is completely interactable. So if I was to select partner driven, yes, as you can see, all the data here is being filtered based upon the selection that I made. So I need all the opportunity information for the West region. I will filter on West and all the data here is now refined. Now, if you would like to drive the filters or refiners from Power Apps, we can apply the same filtering concept as before. So for the tile URL property, I will apply the following filters. Get me all the data where partner driven is equal to no and the account region is East. If I preview the app, observe on the right hand side, this filter that's coming in to the Power BI report is being applied directly through that URL. The pages on the Power BI report, if you want to default to a specific page, you can even do that through another attribute that you can pass to the tile URL property. And for that, we will just pass the page name, report section, and the number of the page. So report section one, that's the first page. If I was to change this to report section two, observe how it selects the second page inside the Power BI report. And here I've just replaced the tile URL hard-coded values for partner driven and region with choices coming in from Power Apps. So if I was to select partner driven no, this will show me all the opportunities where partner driven is no and the region is west. Let me showcase an inventory management solution that I built leveraging Power BI, Power Apps, and Microsoft Dataverse. I have my Power BI report, which has two pages. The first page shows the facility map. This is the storage facility where I'm maintaining my inventory. It showcases the names of the space, the number of spaces available, and the total square footage of that specific space. This is a Microsoft Visio visual inside Power BI. And the colors of these containers change depending upon the space available in these containers. So if the containers have space available, the color would be green. Orange signifies that the container is filling up and red signifies that the container is either out of space or there's very few spaces left. So let's take an example of space J. It can accommodate 40 items. So on the right hand side here, if I select space J, 
we can see that this space has the capacity to accommodate 50 items and there are currently 10 items in this space. I can either update this or I can add additional items. Here the sample inventory that I have created is an inventory of fitness items. I will click on add. So let's say I pick the Olympic barbell set, 30 items of these that are coming in and I would like to place them in space J. Now because there is space available, I can accommodate this and I will submit it, basically add it to that specific space. And the moment I do that, you will observe how the capacity of space J has changed. It only has 10 available spaces now. If I head back to my home screen, if we focus on the Visio visual, it will highlight that fact by turning that space red because there are very few spaces available. I also have a second page which shows a tree map of all the spaces. And this showcases the name of the space and the number of available spaces. And I have an option here called container where I can filter by specific containers. And this is a combo box so I can multi-select. So let's say I pick space A. This now will apply the filter to the Power BI report to only highlight space A. And we can see that Visio has stripped out all the other shapes and is only focusing on the shape for space A, which is right here. If I head over to the tree map page, it will respect the filter that's been applied. And here, since it's a combo box, I can filter by multiple containers or spaces. So let's say I pick space D and space I. The gallery here in Power Apps showcases that data. And at the same time, if we look at the Power BI tile, now it's highlighting those three spaces. So let's look at some of the key aspects of this solution. First, I needed to track the items that are going to come in and out of my inventory. So I have a table that I created specifically for items. And I even have a page here in Power Apps, the data for which comes directly from that table called fitness items. I have my fitness items table. And here I have the following columns, the name of the item, a picture of the item, an item ID that gets generated for every item that I'm tracking. And this is the data for all my fitness items. Next, I have a table called space. And as part of this table, I'm maintaining the name of my space. I'm maintaining a column called shape ID. This ID is crucial because I'm mapping the space ID to my Visio diagram. This Visio diagram I'm maintaining in my OneDrive. I have added my containers as shapes. If I head over to shape info, I have a label here called shape ID. And this ID that I'm maintaining here in this Visio diagram, I am also maintaining the corresponding values for them inside this table of spaces. And we can see the data here in this table. I have the following spaces, and these are all the shape IDs that are matching the shape IDs in my Visio diagram. I'm also maintaining some additional detail, like what's the total capacity of that specific container and how many spaces are currently available. And finally, I have my table of inventory data. I'll look up to my fitness item table so I can map to a specific item. I'll look up to the spaces table so I can map it to a specific space. And then I can define the count if we look at my Power BI report, here my first page only has a Visio visual. The data for this is coming from my spaces table. The shape ID is what I'm mapping to the ID property. And these are the values that I want to show inside each of those shapes. And then the availability factor of that space, which basically drives the color logic. So let's edit this visual. The ID is the shape ID. If I open this, we can see that each of those spaces are being mapped to the IDs coming from my table. Next, I wanted to show the details of my space. I'm showcasing the name. I'm showcasing the size of that space. And I'm showcasing the amount of spaces that are available. And finally, to drive the color logic, I have my availability column. If we look at availability here, it is a calculated column that I created. It basically divides the available space by the total capacity and multiplies it by 100 so it can calculate the percentage of the available space. And I'm leveraging that specific field 
inside the Visio visual properties to drive the color change. So if the availability of space is between 80 to 100%, show the color green. If it's between 60 and 80, orange, 40 and 60, a darker shade of orange, 0 to 40, red. And you can change this based upon your use case. So let's say if it's running out of space, I want to change the color to black, I can just change it right here. And the filtering concept that I'm applying here to my Power BI tile, the data is coming from this combo box, the items for which is being loaded from my table of spaces. And when the user selects items here, if we look at the tile URL property, which is showcasing the entire report, all I'm doing here is checking to see if any items are selected in the combo box. If yes, then I'm applying the filter to my table called space, the field called shape ID, and I'm checking to see if the shape IDs are in the selected values coming in from my combo box. Home screen, once again, we can see the data being changed live and even the color changing live. That's because my Power BI report is connected to my data source, which in this case is Dataverse in direct query mode. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.